going to turn it into an Islamic state. We've heard Gaddafi again and again actually emphasizing and keep hammering out the message that those are Al-Qaeda, those are fanatics, those are militants. They want to take over Libya. They want to turn it into an Islamic emirate. Uh, on the along the lines of what happened in Afghanistan and also in uh, in Afghanistan and by the Taliban. So his tactic is very very clear and very obvious. He is trying firstly to win over the uh, to win over the sympathy and the backing of the West again. He is trying to sell his position to them by scaring them off and showing them that he is still an invaluable asset and they need him desperately to actually prevent the spread of the Islamic movements. That's number one. Number two, he is saying that. I am within my right, as, as the Russians have done within their parliament when they attacked it, as similarly to the USA, which is actually bombing uh, Afghanistan left, right and center in order to get to the, uh, uh, to the Al-Qaeda members. Uh, I, I, I'm within my right to actually bomb uh, Afghanistan. And moreover, he, uh, if we look at actually the underlying events which are taking, they all have, all those countries have exactly the same underlying factors. What the people are coming out and rebelling against is the, they, they all have this simmering tension bubbling beneath the surface. And this simmering tension have simply exploded and erupted in Tunisia. Tunisia was the spark. It was, it was where all it happened. Uh, it was where the domino effect started and the people were hugely encouraged they were emboldened they were inspired by the achievement of the tunisian people they've seen a small sleepy country wake up and actually stand up and challenge a dictator who has been there for 23 years and actually achieve outright victory that is in toppling uh zain al abdin bin ali and then continuing with their protests in order to topple his prime minister who was a member uh, who was uh, his right hand man and a member of the old, gra uh, old guard. We've seen the Egyptians learning from that experience and actually carrying on with their protests because now all the people in the Middle East and particularly the Arab area know that their, that their most potent weapon and the most plausible means of actually exerting pressure and using it as a leverage are those popular uprisings and going out to the street, taking out to the street in defiance thwarting any attempt by the regime to actually uh, deter them or stop them from taking to those streets and protesting. They know that the main strength or leverage they have is being on the street, defying the regimes, taking over one of the prominent positions in prominent squares or rounding about, fortifying it, consolidating their position there and then spreading out and fanning out in order to... Uh, Dr. Fahad Ibrahim. Uh, I want to see uh, the message that the dictatorship in the North Africa they giving to the uh, just uh, uh, making uh, some statement for the Western countries regarding the uh, Islamist will uh, take over the governments in the North Africa. It's showing another part and another story in the West regarding the Islamophobia it is exists in those countries. Yeah, I think the the only message that all dictators uh, had was to raise the fears of the West towards uh, Islamic uh, Islamic phobia or Islamic states. Uh, although at this time the the protesters in Tunisia, Egypt, Yemen, Bahrain, Libya uh, did not talk about Islamic state. They want their their fundamental rights, their uh, freedoms. Uh, they didn't they, they didn't ask about the they didn't raise the, the, the issue of Islamic State, although all of them, nearly the majority of the uh, pro protesters, are, are, are established in, in the Islamic culture. And most of them are um, associated with the religious people, uh, but they did not uh, stick to the, to, the, to, the, to the message that the dictators used to, you know, to raise and to, to encourage the West to to back them and to to let them stay in the in their positions i think uh, but this message did not work out because uh, the west know very well that dictators are expired and they should leave uh, although even well what what is uh, more important is that 
the dictator used the reforms as the final, as the, as the last uh, choice for them to stay in power. Uh, but the, this also, the, the people or the pro protesters did not buy uh, their, uh, their promises, or the dictator's promises. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the, the dictators in, in the Middle East have only one message to the West and the, mes the, the West will not buy it. Uh, but we can see there are differences in the Western countries' uh, position and stance regarding the uprising in each country. That's right. Uh, how you can uh, comment on that matter? Well, actually this uh, reveals the hypocrisy in, in the West. Uh, regarding the uprising, um, th this depends on how how their relationship to the to the countries in the Middle East. For instance, they encourage the the people. Uh, they are ready to fight um, side by side with the Libyan people against their dictators, but they are not. Uh, they they are not ready to to let the 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 king of Bahrain to be toppled. Uh, by the people, or even the, to, to change the system, they said we okay. We encourage what the, what they call the national dialogue uh, between uh, opposition forces and the government, uh, but the, they don't. They will not. Maybe they, they will they will intervene also to n not to let the the kingdom of Bar or the Al Khalifa's regime to be uh, troubled. So uh, I think those who are uh, allies with the the, the allies of the uh, United States and the West as a whole uh, will not be, uh, will have uh, the support of the United States and the West as a whole, just like Saudi Arabia and any other GCC states. Uh, but they, they will be happy to see uh, Gaddafi is removed from power. They will, they will be happy to see um, even Iran or any other countries who are, who they are against. Even regarding the Libya, there are doubts regarding this matter because uh, some uh, European country will lose their uh, interest in Libya, like Italy and uh, Britain. Uh, but Dr. Zaid Issa, I want to see your view in this regard, regarding the differences in the position of the Western countries toward the uprising in the Middle East and how you can assess their uh, stance. You mentioned it is uh, differences between what they are uh, preaching and what they are uh, right. doing. And uh, it is very exact fact regarding this matter. But we want to uh, give a clear picture in this regard. Well, uh, I need to start off with a very important point. It's absolutely crucial to highlight it. What we've seen in those popular uprisings has actually fiercely refuted the long-held beliefs and also the entrenched stereotypes or opinions in the West that those people in the Middle East, particularly the Arabs, are not capable of democ democracy. They don't understand democracy and they have been peddling those lies for such a long time that even if they are given democracy, they don't know how to deal with it. It also fiercely refutes the lies propagated by the dictators themselves, like Mubarak, Zain al Abidin, and also Gaddafi himself and the King of Bahrain, when they actually came out and publicly said, if we are toppled or if we are ousted, then simply our countries will plunge in civil war. As Mubarak have said, and as Gaddafi has, sa Gaddafi has said also, that oh, my country would plunge into civil, civil war. And the king of Bahrain has also said, my country would simply plunge into, sec plunge into sectarian war. All of them are using those excuses to crush their people. Now, if we come to the position of the West, we have to say that the word simply hypocrisy or sheer hypocrisy does not actually do justice in describing what they are actually doing. They are the same people who propped up those regimes. They are the same people who back them up. They are the same people who supplied them with the arms. We've seen now that the arms that the Bahraini regime and also Gaddafi have received from the West uh, have actually been authorized by the West under the excuse that we are selling those weapons under the strictest possible measures. And now this is laughable because what they're doing in revoking the licenses are simply shutting the door, are shutting the stable door after the, the horse has fled. Uh, Dr. Zerisa, in this regard, I want to ask you a question, but uh, uh, 
let me to have a break in this program and after that we continue okay. our discussion. Okay. Uh, please stay with us and uh, follow what we uh, have in the next episode. Thank you. In this program, as you uh, follow the matter, we're discussing the uprising and uh, revolution in the North Africa and Middle East countries and what is the cause and motives of this uh, movement. And I am so delighted today to have two honorable guests, Dr. Fouad Ibrahim and Dr. Zaid Issa. Uh, we discussed in the first part regarding the approaches of the Western countries uh, toward the uh, Arab dictatorship, and uh, as Dr. Said Issa mentioned, uh, some of them they are just uh, uh, implanted there by the Western countries. But I want to know the uh, essence of the uh, culture of those countries have any impact on those uprising or not. For example, we know the Libya it is a tribal, uh, uh, and each tribe got. Uh, its uh, culture and uh, differences, Yemen in the same thing, uh, Bahrain it got another color. I want to know how you can assess uh, the differences between those tribes and those culture between the people, for example, to uh, have a succeed movement on that country. Uh, we saw the successful in uh, Egypt and Tunisia. Uh, what was the success belong and how they uh, achieve the matter? Well, uh, unfortunately, the primordial uh, ties in Yemen, uh, Libya, and Bahrain uh, work against the, the success of uh, the uprisings. Uh, because once you have tribal, sectarian, regional divisions, uh, then you will have uh, dictators who can capitalize on these divisions in order to maintain power and unlike uh, Egypt and, and Tunisia where the these uh, divisions are very um, um, very minor so we, we can we can say the the successful uh, uprising in Egypt and Tunisia could be attributed to the uh, to the uh, the the lack of differences, uh, deep differences within the societies. Um, I, I think the dictators in, in Libya, Yemen, and Bahrain uh, are working on deepening the divisions within their societies. So, uh, unfortunately, I've seen people who used to work with. Uh, who are active in, in, in the Islamic Unity Project, uh, and now they are um, raising the, the, the banner of uh, Sunni Shi uh, divisions, like in Bahrain. Uh, also, you have the tribal leaders who are sided with the, uh, the uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh, although he he crushed the the, the, the tribe leaders in uh, in the south and in the, in the north. Uh, also in, in Libya, he said, "I will, I will arm the the, the, the tribe, the tribes to to fight what, against the protesters." What was the reason behind of this matter? Well, the the matter is that the, the, there is a uprising, and there are people who will lose in this uprising. So they decided to. Uh, you know, to side with to side with the with the dictators, everywhere you you will have 